Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and I hope you guys are doing well. I have a fantastic video in store for you guys today. If you like playing around with technology such as Raspberry Pi 4 devices, VMware vSphere, ESXi, and well, just building out your home lab environment, running virtual machines, and other virtualized goodness, then you're gonna love this video. So make sure your coffee is hot, and if it's not, we're going to fill it full of a cup of Raspberry Pi 4, VMware ESXi, and Home Lab. So stick around. If you haven't heard of ESXi on ARM, then you've been missing out. But that's what today's video is about. We're going to get you up to speed on what exactly is VMware ESXi on ARM. What can you do with it? And how do you get started? First off, VMware ESXi on ARM is what is known as a VMware fling. What is known as a VMware fling. VMware flings are unofficial packages that are developed by VMware engineers, but they are not officially sanctioned. A case in point is the VMware OS optimization tool. This tool has been around for years and has been used by thousands of engineers worldwide to optimize VDI images for the use with VMware Horizon. VMware just recently officially brought the VMware OS optimization tool under official support. So it's an official product now, and it shows how valuable the VMware Fling ecosystem really is. Many products and solutions that are introduced on the VMware Fling side eventually make it into production supported solutions. So let's take a look at the official VMware Fling site for ESXi on ARM, and it's found at flings.vmware.com slash ESXi ARM Edition, and I will uh, post this link in the description of the video. But as you can see, it's just a VMware fling that's readily available for download. Agree to the EULA, and then you can download the ESXi ARM ISO. A few of the requirements that are mentioned on the page that we just want to briefly highlight. Of course, there are data center solutions that can run ESXi on ARM. List out examples for the data center, for the near edge. For the far edge, as you can note, they list Raspberry Pi 4. 4 gig or 8 gigabyte models. However, 8 gigabytes is highly recommended for obvious reasons. And they list out some models of hardware here. There's also a quick note about vCenter support. So if you want to build up a series of ESXi ARM devices uh, on Raspberry Pi devices, uh, you can actually run this as a vCenter server managed solution like you would any other vSphere cluster. There are a couple of caveats to that. There were some breaking changes evidently to DRS or the Distributed Resource Scheduler in 7.0 Update 1 for vCenter. So you can't use DRS. If you want to use an ESXi ARM cluster that has fully functional DRS capabilities, they recommend using 7.0C or 7.0D. So guys, let's talk about what you need to load ESXi on ARM on a Raspberry Pi 4 device. What do you need to get started? First things first, you need a Raspberry Pi 4 device. Now, unfortunately, Raspberry Pi 4 devices have gone up in price, especially since the supply chain demand and other issues that we've seen over the past two years. However, just doing a quick search on Amazon, we see that there are readily available kits that include the Raspberry Pi 4 device, case, heat sinks, in most cases, the power supply. Some even include the micro SD card, as well as USB flash devices. Some even have the cabling and other things that may be needed to hook up to external video sources and what have you. So just a quick search again on Amazon, you can see there are many kits readily available and that actually look like they are ready to ship and that will arrive in a timely manner. Most look to be around the $275 mark, $280, somewhere around there. Some you'll see even edge on up closer to $300. However, when you think about the capability that you will have with this ESXi on ARM project of running a full ESXi hypervisor on a Raspberry Pi 4 device, it's pretty awesome to think for sub $300, you can start out in your home lab adventure using a power efficient, small footprint, easy to get going hypervisor server. So just the basics that I have for this ESXi on ARM project is a Raspberry Pi 4. And this is actually a kit that I had put together a couple of years ago. 
Uh, it's the Canakit 8 gigabyte model. Of course, it comes with the case. It came with the heat sinks, which you can't see inside the case. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 model with 8 gigs of memory. It also came with the micro SD card, which I have several of these laying around. Uh, so got micro SD. And you need to have at least a couple USB flash devices. Now, this particular SanDisk model is a 32 gig model. And this is going to be the target for the ESXi installation but you're going to need another USB thumb drive to serve as the source of the installation for the ESXi on ARM ISO file. For the first step, we are going to download the files that we need for this ESXi on ARM installation. First, we're going to download the ESXi ARM ISO. So on the VMware Fling site, we're going to accept the EULA, select ESXi ARM ISO, and get service. And this will take us to the official download site for the ESXi for ARM installation. If you know, we're going to look for the ISO image here. So we're going to click download. Or logging in with a free VMware account that you can easily create, we just simply accept the EULA and the download should begin. Now that we have our ESXi for ARM ISO downloading, there are a couple of other file packages that we need for this ESXi for ARM installation. The first of which is we need to download the latest UEFI firmware for the Raspberry Pi 4 device. Now I'm gonna post the link for this download of the package. The latest release as of the time of this video is version 1.33. So we simply download the zip file for the UEFI firmware. Next, we're going to download the firmware master package that's also a GitHub uh, repository that we can hit and download the master.zip file for Raspberry Pi 4 firmware. We're gonna click download zip and this will download the firmware master zip package. Now that we have those file downloads in order, we can now use those packages of files to put together the correct installation package that we need to install ESXi for ARM. Now that we have our files downloaded, we can begin the extraction process on the zip files and start merging the files together that we need. As you can see, I've placed these on the desktop for clarity. We have the firmware master and we have the Raspberry Pi 4 UEFI firmware version 1.33. So the first thing we're going to do is extract our zip file packages. And this will allow us to take a look at the file contents and merge files together as part of both packages. Now that we have these zip packages extracted, we can now merge the files that we need from both packages. I have the folders on the desktop. The first folder that we want to go into is the firmware master folder. And we're going to note the files that we're going to delete from this folder. So double click into firmware master, go to the boot folder. We're gonna scroll all the way down to kernel through kernel eight. I'm going to select all four of those files and I'm going to delete them. Now that we've deleted those files, we're going to go into our Raspberry Pi 4 UEFI version 1.33 folder. We're going to select all of those files and we're just going to select those and copy them to our clipboard. We're going to go back to the firmware master boot folder and now we're going to simply paste in all of the files from the version 1.33 package that we extracted. You will get this expected dialog box that says hey there are files that are going to be replaced. We're going to select the replace the files in the destination. Now we have all of the files in order that we're going to need to copy to our micro SD card. So let's see how to prepare that micro SD card and get those files to it. Now that we have our files in place, we can format our micro SD card with FAT32 and then copy over the files that we had merged together. So I've got the micro SD card mounted. I'm going to select FAT32 and I'm going to perform a quick format. We're going to format the disk and the format is complete. So now what we can do is we can take and copy those files that we had created into our micro SD card. Now that we have prepared the micro SD card, I have copied over the contents of the modified boot folder. So again, you're simply copying the contents of the boot folder to the blank micro SD card. So you, your micro SD card is gonna look something like this. You're gonna have a firmware folder, 
overlays folder, and then files that exist in the root of the directory. Another recommendation before you install ESXi on ARM on your Raspberry Pi 4 device is to ensure that your bootloader is up to date. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can actually install the Raspbian OS and boot into the operating system and run a specific command that I'm going to display on the screen. Doing that updates the bootloader and ensures that it is at its most current up-to-date state, helping to ensure that the ESXi on ARM installation will be successful. There's also a special purpose image that you can pull down from the Raspberry Pi imager or the imager utility that's available on the Raspberry Pi website. Let me just show you both. You can install the Raspberry Pi OS by simply pulling the image directly from the imager utility and the other miscellaneous utility images allow you to boot from the image and ensure that the bootloader is up to date. One of the last parts of the process to ensure we've got all of the resources that we need for the installation is to actually create our installation media. As you recall, we downloaded earlier on the VMware vSphere ESXi on ARM ISO. So now we need to get that ISO image onto a USB drive. To do that, we're going to use our trusty tried and true utility Rufus to essentially burn the ISO image to the USB disk. So I'm going to select the disk that we want to use. So I'm going to select the ISO image and we're going to start the creation process. The ISO image has successfully been transferred to the USB drive. So now we're ready to use this USB disk to boot our ESXi on ARM installation. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to insert the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi 4 device. We're also going to insert two USB drives. One contains the burned ISO image using the Rufus utility, as we just saw in the last step. The other USB disk will serve as the boot drive for the ESXi installation. There is another step that we want to complete as we first boot our Raspberry Pi 4 device. And it involves making sure that a limitation for the memory that can be used is changed in the Raspberry Pi BIOS. And take a look at this screenshot that I captured on my Raspberry Pi 4 device. The setting is under the advanced configuration and the setting is called limit RAM to three gigs we need to disable that setting. Once that setting is disabled, we can then save our changes to the BIOS. With this setting enabled, it can cause issues with the ESXi installation. So we wanna make sure that that is effectively disabled before we install ESXi. At this point, we are ready to boot our Raspberry Pi 4 device and install ESXi on ARM. As a point to note, there is really no difference in installing ESXi on ARM as there is in installing normal ESXi on an Intel or AMD based processor. You will configure the host as normal. You're going to select your storage that you want to install ESXi on. You're going to set your root password and the normal other configuration changes that are made when initially configuring an ESXi host. Once that is finished, we can configure our host for network connectivity and actually log into ESXi on ARM for the first time. Guys, this is the exciting part. ESXi on ARM install is completed. And now I have browsed out to the web interface of my newly installed ESXi on ARM fling running on Raspberry Pi 4. This is just super awesome. So let's log in and we'll see what it looks like. So we are logged into the ESXi on ARM host interface. So it looks just like an enterprise server. So you can't really tell the difference between logging into this and an R740 is in terms of the experience that you see. And as you know, the hardware that's displaying for the host itself, as we can see, it's Raspberry Pi Foundation, Raspberry Pi 4, Model B, four CPUs, ARM limited cores. We've got eight gigs of memory, roughly everything else is functional. We see our statistics for our host itself. We can manage the host. Uh, we see hardware information, look at virtual machines, which I don't have anything running at the moment. 
we've got storage configuration, and we've got networking. One thing I've done is I have onboarded this ESXi on ARM server into vCenter that I have running in the lab environment. As you can see, I've got vCenter server running, and I have the 10.1.149.154 host is my ESXi on ARM host. And again, if we click on the host, we've got the information pulled correctly in vCenter. I did also add an additional USB drive to the host. One thing I wanted to walk through with you guys is adding a data store to this ESXi on ARM host. So if I go and I click the uh, storage, we right click when we go to storage, new data store, BMFS. So we're going to call this ESX ARM DS01. We're going to select the additional USB drive, BMFS6. Partition creation, we're going to use all available and everything looks good there. We're going to finish and the creation of the new data store is finished successfully. As we can see, we've got a data store ready to go. So now all we have to do is actually copy up our installation media and we can install a virtual machine on our ESXi on ARM host as we would any other operating system on a normal Intel or AMD processor. So let's talk about use cases for this really cool and awesome project, ESXi on ARM. Why would you use this? Well, number one, the use cases that I can think of, if you are wanting to get into a home lab super, super cheap, in other words, you want to start getting your hands on the technologies that are used to build even more robust home labs, getting your hands on VMware vSphere and physical hardware such as the Raspberry Pi 4 device is a great way to start learning this technology and really practical workloads that you could run on top of this ESXi on ARM solution would be very small and lightweight Linux VM for running specific home lab services that require very minimal resources. And the advantage of having those resources running as a virtual machine instead of running on top of the physical Raspberry Pi hardware would be for backup purposes. So you could essentially point your backup solution, whether that is Veeam or whether it's another backup solution that offers free licensing that you can make use of for the home lab environment. And that backup solution is going to be able to grab a copy of that virtual machine from that Raspberry Pi device, instead of you having to worry about the physical hardware, you will essentially have a good backup that you could restore at a moment's notice on a totally separate Raspberry Pi device running ESXi on ARM, for instance. And ESXi on ARM is not the only hypervisor that you can run on Raspberry Pi 4 devices. I've read blog posts recently about running KVM natively on Raspberry Pi 4 devices. And that's another hypervisor that I wanna play around with on my Raspberry Pi 4 device. Well, what do you guys think about ESXi on ARM? I personally think it is incredibly cool. A really awesome project that you can get your hands on and make use of Raspberry Pi 4 devices that you may have lying around your house. Or if you are new to home lab environments, you don't want to make a tremendous investment in expensive home lab servers. You can literally buy a $270 Raspberry Pi 4 kit and install an enterprise hypervisor that's used in enterprise environments today, such as VMware vSphere, on that that Raspberry Pi 4 device and run virtual machine and start playing around with backups, networking, storage, all of the building blocks to learning other services and solutions. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. I hope you've really enjoyed this deep dive into Raspberry Pi 4 and VMware vSphere ESXi on ARM. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.